years, when they come to the end of their lease term, they need to go back to the bank. The bank is the one that owns the, the equipment. Um, and in this case here, we've got an example with CIT being the leasing company who owns this machine. So we have what's called a bill of lading. You'll hear BOL, that stands for bill of lading, BOL. In this case, we have a lease return bill of lading put together here. And it's for a CIT owned asset. And in this case, CIT, they don't want this machine back themselves. They're going to have this machine shipped back to asset recovery specialists in San Diego, California. So what happens is the banks, CIT, Wells Fargo, U.S. Bank, all those different companies, uh, they contract with wholesalers and they have the wholesalers purchase their copiers at the end of lease or they may take them as consignment. But for the most part, it's either consignment or purchase, but that's what happens is the machines end up going to a wholesaler. They don't actually go to the bank at the end of the term. Um, so what happens is CIT, once this lease hits the end of its lease term, will send what's called a return authorization to the customer, and that outlines where they want the machine to. I do have a sample return authorization here. This one's not the same as what's on that BOL. This one's older. Um, but you see here it's called Equipment Return Authorization. So you'll hear people use the term RA. That stands for Return Authorization. Uh, so if you do hear that, that's what that stands for. In this case, this is a U.S. Bank Return Authorization. It's dated. It's an older one. But you always do want to take a look and see if the RA is old. Uh, the leasing companies, a lot of times, uh, not the, the wholesalers won't accept it if the return authorization is too old. So we do have to generally call the leasing company and get that um, approved for them to accept that uh, equipment back later. The lease number is listed on it. And then as you scroll down here, you see they're saying to ship this machine. Again, different order than what our example. This one's going to RCI Wholesale in Oceanside, California. The asset valuation they want the asset insured for. And the second page lists the Canon. It's a Canon is the make. Uh, model is an IRC 7260, and here's the serial number. Um, again, so the serial number is very important. This is what has to be on the machine, and, and this is what the return depot will look at and match up with the serial number on the machine and determine if they're going to accept the machine or not. So that's very important. The asset number isn't very relevant in this case. It's the serial number is the main number you want to look for. So moving back to this, we've got, we'll start back at the, the uh, BOL again. So we have our BOL date. So with these are, you always want to look and make sure that we're, we're moving through things quickly. If you're looking at this in California at the, and you're uh, running to the lease return depots, if you see a BOL date that's, you know, a week, two, three weeks old and is aged out, you're probably going to want to prioritize getting that one loaded and sent to the return depot as soon as you possibly can. Uh, anything, you generally have about 30 days, three to four weeks from the date the return authorization is issued it, to get the equipment delivered to the depot. So we, you know, time is of the essence. It's important that we are constantly getting the uh, oldest machines and making sure we're cycling those through. Uh, the bill two here, <clears throat> this is going to be generally who booked the order. So in this case here, we have ABC copiers book the order. Um, and we're basically we're going out to pick up the equipment. Uh, ABC Copiers, we would say, had Smith Accounting as one of their customers, and we're doing the lease return for ABC Copiers who booked it, but their customer and the lessee is Smith Accounting. And Smith Accounting is the one that leased this RICO. So it's a, a CIT lease. You can see it's a RICO MPC 4503. The serial number is listed right here, and it would match what's on the return authorization. But again, you want to make sure you're looking at the serial number on the machine and matching it to the RA and making sure that the, the BOL and RA match up together too. Because what can happen sometimes is a dealer may have three or four different machines with th on three or four different return authorizations, and you, it, they can actually mix up and put the wrong return authorization by accident on the machine. So you want to make sure you've got all the, the proper paperwork on the proper machine and then match it up when you place the BOL onto that as well. The origin here shows you where to go pick up the device, where it's located. The ship to confirms where the machine is shipping to. And the asset valuation lists how much uh, insurance or valuation is to be included on this order. 
So you do want to look at this number too. It doesn't matter if it's $3,500 or 60 cents. You want to confirm the serial number and then you want to look at the machine. And we've got some different videos on how to properly inspect a machine. But again, you're going to want to check the screen on it, even if it's wrapped. <clears throat> Peel it back, look back, look at the screen, make sure it's not cracked. Place a cardboard uh, protective uh, piece in there to protect the screen. Check to make sure nothing's scratched, gouged, um, the panels are all there, they're not broken. Uh, make sure the toner is in it, you know, all the casters are there, and notate anything. <clears throat> so in this case, we have a copier. So you would notate, if you're picking up at the origin, you would put one. You have one copier here. If the copier had a finisher, uh, which is where the machine is a second piece, where the paper comes out, can be stapled, you would put one there. If it had an LCT, that stands for large capacity tray. And basically what that is, is it's a, it's, it, think of it as they have the paper drawers on the machines, but that's just not enough. They need more drawers. So you hook up an LCT, which is basically a big box that attaches to the side of the machine and it's full of even more paper, a large capacity tray. Just think of a paper tray. Well, there's a large capacity tray holds more paper, <clears throat> it's a box, uh, it's a, it attaches to the side of the machine, can't miss it. Uh, if a machine has what's called a fiery, it looks like a computer tower, these are very important that you note them down on here, so you would write down fiery. And the important thing we're doing here is we're not just noting what we're picking up, but this also is gonna be the directory or, or confirm what we're delivering. So if we don't note that we picked up a fiery, and then the customer says, oh, you, you, you picked that up. There's some discrepancy. So if you have a production machine or something like that, we want to make sure we're noting everything we are picking up. And if there's some obvious things that we, we see that we're not picking up, we want to note that. You can have a copier that could look like it should have a finisher and have finisher brackets on the side, but there's no finisher with it. You're going to want to write next to finishers, no finisher. So it's noted on the BOL at origin that there was no finisher picked up. So they can't say later, you lost the finisher. That's what we're trying to avoid. We're trying to get this very accurate in terms of what we're picking up. And then we want it very accurate in what in terms of what we delivered. So we have the total number of pieces, uh, printers. Again, if you have a desktop printer you're picking up, these lines right here below, you're able to write things in. So if you're picking up a production machine or something with a little bit of size, you can look at that. And if you don't know what kind of machine it is or what kind of accessory name that would be, that's okay. What you want to do is look on a side plate of the accessory. Basically, you can open up a door or look for a little thing and it should have a model number and just write the model number in and the quantity. So that's what you want to put in there. And then you'll take the total number of pieces. If there is a box of accessories, you would also notate the box here. Um, and just put again any information on it. You'll want to make sure you sticker every single thing you pick up so the piece count matches the total number of pieces listed on the paperwork. You should see as well uh, if there's special requirements. So uh, you should be receiving your paperwork and have any of these things checked. If it's a time stop, masonite, stairs, rush. Uh, so you, you can show up on the job um, properly prepared. Now, origin checklist, this is where you would go through and look and see, okay, if you went to the origin to pick up the equipment, was the equipment wrapped at the origin by the shipper? So that, the reason why we ask this is, so is it easily free, easy for you to inspect the condition of the equipment or did they wrap it heavily in black stretch wrap and you can't see anything on it? And so they could be having concealed damage. So if it's heavily wrapped, you would say equipment wrapped at origin by shipper, check the yes box. If it wasn't, check no. Serial numbers confirm, confirmed by driver. You're gonna to wanna to check off here that you did confirm the serial numbers. You always wanna do that. Uh, inspected equipment and you put screen protection on. Screen protection again is the worst case, even if it's wrapped, you still wanna look at the screens. They are they're very important. It's very easy just to do a little slit on the top of the strut trap and peel it back, look inside and just confirm there's no breaks on the screen. And then once you do that, you would just take a piece of our cardboard screen protector, slide it inside the slat behind the strut trap, between the screen and the strut trap, and pop it back into place. And that's gonna provide you some protection there. Uh, finisher brackets and trays removed. These are gonna be if the copier does have a finisher, they have metal brackets on the side. You should have a Phillips head screwdriver. They should just easily take the screws right out of it. 
I would place the brackets up on the top of the copier underneath the ADF tray, and you can put the screws back into the holes on the side of the machine. The finisher should also have trays that you can remove. Uh, what this does increases a lot of space and also reduces damage risk that we have. Equipment prep level one, two, and three. A level one equipment prep is for a lease return that we're doing from say Phoenix to Los Angeles. It's basically just a little bit of stretch wrap around the top to hold all the components in place, the screen protection in place and provide basic protections. Level two is gonna be a little bit more where we're gonna go in and do a top to bottom stretch wrap on it. It could be a new machine that we're delivering and we wanna provide additional protection. So it's going to be a, a better inspection, a top to bottom stretch wrap. Make sure you're unplugging all the cords and plugs off the sides and all the finisher brackets are removed. That would be on a level one as well. Level three is going to be the full deal where you're going to come in and do a full cleaning of the machine, inspect it, remove the brackets, trays, and then we'll do a corner board wrap with bubble wrap around it and screen protection. Uh, so it's a pretty comprehensive um, protection level. These traditionally are based on the asset valuation. So if it's a high value insurance, we're gonna to wanna to have more of a level three. A very important part here too, is that you're inspecting the equipment carefully and noting everything in here. So if you do find equipment does have a scratched screen, and again, it does have to be just a broken panel or, or control panel, it could be a scratched screen or scuffs or something's cracked, you're gonna to wanna to note that here. Uh, and you could put down, if there's you know five or six machines, you could put down the last four of the serial number and then just put in a quick note of what the condition or what you're noticing with it. If it's missing a tray, if a tray is broken, if a screen's cracked, whatever it is, you note that here. Now this is the shipper side, and this is when you're picking up the machine, you're gonna have them sign this side. So your customer would sign the shipper's signature and then make sure you have your customer print out their name and then you're gonna put the date that you picked the machine up your time in, and this is the time that you arrive at the location, and then you have the time out, the time that you are leaving the location, and again, put your name in there. If you're delivering the equipment, this is the delivery side, you would have them delivery signature, print their name, the date's very important here as well, and then the time in, time out, and the driver name. After you picked up the machine, you put the asset ID tag on the, on the device that's got the, the lease BOL and the return authorization. This is the asset ID tag. The reason why we do this is it makes it more identifiable for the people returning the equipment in California to be able to identify which machine has the paperwork. And the reason we say this is you could have a, a BOL that can have 10, 12 pieces of on one return authorization or one BOL. So that means you pick up 12 copiers and it's one set of paperwork. And so when the, the team goes to deliver it in Southern California, they push that off the truck into the return depot and there's gonna be 12 machines and they don't know which one has the paperwork on it. And you're ripping off the stretch wrap and things can get caught up in it and then stuff can get thrown out. So putting this asset ID tag on the machine that has the paperwork with it makes it more easily identifiable for uh, the people in California to be able to see which machine has the paperwork and get right to that. But this again is pretty similar to the BOL, uh, just says the origin, ship to, piece one of, so it's got to say if it's piece one of 12, you put one of 12 right here. You would still put your piece count of what makes it up, total loaded by. Um, on additional pieces, you would just use the asset stickers. And it's very important that you're placing the stickers on the machines because it does help us keep those related. The BOL number is a very important part of it. So we need to keep the, the finisher that belongs to, if this Rico 4503 had a finisher that we picked up, we need to make sure that we identify that finisher and make it easy for that finisher to be delivered with the copier. We can't have the two get separated and you can't forget to deliver it or just deliver any finisher. It has to be the finisher we picked up. So it's very important that we have the paperwork is accurate, we match the serial number, and then we sticker any accessories and note this BOL number and where the machine is shipping to. Those are very important pieces for us.